Tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise, exclusively on OC16. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we visit the Maui Ocean Center and learn about those amazing humpback whales. <clears throat> then we'll learn how to draw them and finish off with a whale of a painting party. Why are they called humpbacks? Why do they breach? What do they eat? Let's put an oval right around here in the middle of the page. See how I went nice and smooth? I didn't go chick, 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 and I'm not digging in. And another teardrop like this. This is the first time I've painted a whale, I can tell you that. So the polka dots are to scare off predators. What's your whale's name? Flower. Flower, flower the whale. Well, it's brought to my attention that maybe I could use different variety of colors to make this whale pop. Finally, I'll show you some oil painting techniques I used to paint my whales. <laughs> so grab your pens, paper, colors, paints, whatever you want to use to paint your humpbacks and join us for a whale of a painting party. Here we are at the Maui Ocean Center, and this is the place to be if you want to learn about Hawaiian wildlife. I'm here with General Manager Tapani Viori. Aloha, Tapani. Aloha, Patrick. Hi. Thank you for visiting us uh, today. We really appreciate seeing you here. We are starting to incorporate Hawaiian cultural activities into the park. So on a daily basis, when you visit Maui Ocean Center, you will see different cultural practitioners. This is all about creating living culture. We believe we are in the central location here in Maui, and it's really, really important to keep the culture alive and share the stories with locals and visitors alike, and invite them into the park and learn about Hawaiian marine life. And hopefully we have a role in helping inspire the next generation of marine biologists aquarists, divers, environmentalists, etc. It is really important for us that we expose the marine life to all the local uh, kids so they appreciate what we have here. Why are they called humpbacks? The humpback whales, they get their name from a very distinct dorsal fin right on top of their body, especially when they dive down, very distinct hump on their back. So that's where they get their name from. Why do they breach? So breaching for humpback whales, there's a lot of theories as to why they do it. They believe that one of the theories is communication, especially the female will communicate with its calf a lot. So they do all these aerial displays. Mm. A lot of times you see it during competition pods as well. Well, males tend to compete against each other for the female. And sometimes with the calves, it might just be pure mm. enjoyment and playfulness. Why do humpbacks breach? Mm. I mean, if you're a humpback, what else you got to do? What do they eat? Humpback whales use their expanding throats to suck up large amounts of water containing small fish and sea creatures called krill. The whales feed in their summer feeding grounds of Alaska and do not eat when they come to Hawaii. When they do come to Hawaii, they do so to mate, have their babies, and play in their tropical winter wonderland. Historical records suggest that the migration of humpbacks to Hawaii may be a recent occurrence, happening just in the past two or three hundred years. So we do have our new whale observation platform located in our harbor plaza that gives our guests the opportunity to observe humpback whales right from Maui Ocean Center. 
so they get a chance to view from two telescopes that are free of charge for guests to hopefully see some breaches or some whale activity. Oh! Oh, wow! Triple somersault! Amazing! We're in a perfect location where we get lots of activity here in the middle of the Maui Nui Basin. It's a great opportunity for them. All right, let's show them how a whale breach, okay? When we return, I'll show you a simple drawing process you can use to draw your humpback whales. Painting in paradise! Now we're going to start off our drawing of a humpback whale and we're going to be using a pencil. Okay, so I want you to press softly. Everybody, how are we going to press? Softly. Very good. And the reason we're going to press softly is because we might want to erase or adjust these lines that we do in our form-up stage, okay? So I'm going to take you through a three-step drawing process, forming, outlining, and shading. And I'd like you to write these three words on the top of your paper because it's going to help you remember, okay? Now the forming stage of this drawing is very important and it's a stage that a lot of people skip. And in forming, we're going to press nice and softly, okay? I'm going to make some shapes to form up our whale and they're just going to be simple shapes like they're basically going to be like ovals. I'll do a couple teardrops in there too, okay? You guys ready to go? Let's put an oval right around here in the middle of the page and maybe like a skinny egg, okay? An oval right around there. See how I went nice and smooth? I didn't go chick, 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 and I'm not digging in. And this is gonna be the oval of the whale's body. Now I'll attach another oval back here, and that's gonna be the section of the whale that leads up to the tail. So it's gonna be a smaller, skinnier oval, just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna put a little circle up here towards the whale's head and mouth. And for the tail, imagine a teardrop, okay? Ooh. Each side of the whale's tail is called a fluke. Okay, I'm gonna put a teardrop up here like this. And another teardrop like this. Okay, and we almost got our humpback whale going. We need a couple things up front. What do we need up front? Flippers called, do you know what the scientific name is called? Pectoral fins. I think it's scientific. And we'll make its flippers like long skinny ovals over here okay and there's also a little thing on top of the whale that gives it its name humpback whale and it is a hump okay we'll put a little hump it's a little fin over here and now we just formed up our humpback whale and now we're going to do the outlining and this is where you folks bring your pens in so now gang we've got this as our guide over here we're not going to follow exactly inside these lines. Okay, now watch what I do. I'll take a line from the back of the tail and I'll come kind of connect these two shapes and stop right at the fin, just like that, okay? Now, I'm going to start to outline the fin. And this is a good lesson about overlapping lines. A line that goes in front of another line tells the viewer what's in front of what. So I'm gonna recontinue my line. Recontinue is a word here. It's gonna start here, go up to the chin, around, and all the way to the back of that whale's hump, and then swoop it up all the way to the tail. In fact, I'll go a little farther, 
overlap that line right there. And now it's time for the tail. A whale tail can be very fun. Okay, I'm gonna go around that teardrop shape. And give a little overlap right there. These little overlapping lines tell the viewer what's in front of what. Now we have a humpback whale and it also has uh, just one flipper, yeah? But we know that whales have how many flippers? Two, right. So let's repeat this shape and put it anywhere you want and stop it right up there, okay? Now for the mouth, it's a little strange. The mouth goes way up here and dips way over there. And you can put the maka, what is the maka? Eyeball, right. So make that maka nice and dark. And even if you want to put a hint of a little blowhole up there, right around there it will go. Now to finish outlining our whale, we'll give it a few strips just like this. One, two, three. And we'll give them a few more coming out the back. One, two, three, four. And these grooves expand when the whale gulps in all that ocean water when they're eating krill. Not in Hawaii, but in other parts of the world where they feed. Okay, so we just finished our humpback whale. We got it formed up, we got it outlined. Now let's go to shading, but before we do, let's put a little line of water. We can put water up here and the whale will be underwater. Or we might even put some water over here and you know, maybe the whale's tail can be sticking out of the water. So put your water wherever you want. I'll put some right around here. Da, 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 da. So my whale is kind of half in and half out of the water. Put your water line in there. Put a little sun up there so we find our source of light. And now we can do our third stage of the drawing, which is shading. Okay, so if the sun's hitting the whale up top, it's gonna be a little darker in places where the sun doesn't hit. So we can go ahead and do a little shading over here. Okay, so give it a little shading in that back flipper there and instantly that flipper looks farther away. Okay, so we just finished the three stages of a drawing. We did our forming, outlining, and shading, and now we're ready to paint our humpback. Now get your colors and paints out, because when we return, it'll be a whale of a painting party. Experience a lifetime of discovery, all in a single day. Encounter beauty, explore, wonder, and be amazed as Hawaii's vibrant aquatic world unfolds before your eyes. A day of adventure awaits you at Maui Ocean Center, the Hawaiian Aquarium. Immerse yourself in Maui's underwater paradise and explore its fascinating inhabitants from the smallest and most delicate sea creatures to mesmerizing rays and sharks. Learn about the deep cultural connection between the Hawaiian people and the seas that surround the islands. And come face to face with some of the ocean's most mysterious and elusive creatures. Don't miss Hawaii's top rated family attraction, Maui Ocean Center, conveniently located in Ma'alaya. For more information, call 808-270-7000 or visit MauiOceanCenter.com. So here we have our primary color, okay? This is where color starts. You can't mix anything to get blue, can't mix anything to get yellow, and you can't mix anything to get red. But if you do mix your red and yellow together, you get what? Orange, Orange right. 
And if you mix your yellow and blue together, you get green. And how about, this is a hard one behind the back. Oh, if you mix red and blue together, you get purple. You guys been studying before you got here, huh? So now we're gonna use these colors and make anything we want on and around our whales. I don't care what color you make your whales, you can make your whales a rainbow if you want, okay? We're just gonna have a good time. What I learned from Patrick is that he made it very, very easy for me to create the whale. You know, I have problems drawing stick figures, let alone creating any kind of realistic looking painting, drawing. So he made that part very easy. And my experience was that I really enjoyed it and I found that I could probably sit here all day and, and just keep going. This is the first time I've painted a whale, I can tell you that. Today I learned that the top of the sky is darker than the bottom of the sky. So the polka dots are to scare off predators. What's your whale's name? Flower. Flower, flower the whale. If you put white under a color that it makes it more vibrant. So then everything's not just all 2D, it stands out more. I really like the brush um, style technique where you can actually see the brush lines, but some people actually blend them. I like showing the brushes. And that's something different I learned from him. my attention that maybe I could use different variety of colors to make this whale pop. I love aqua, so I, my ocean has to be a nice bright aqua. And I love all the different colored fish that we have, and my favorite of all is a sunrise shell because they're just so beautiful. So I decided to add a little sunrise shell to the bottom line. I did the sun, it took me time because I did like big lines and then small lines, so it was hard to color inside of that. My favorite part is the whales and the sun because they look like just matched for the painting.
When I paint my whales, I usually start with a dark and a light, you know, like a gray to a white. When the white parts are getting hit by the sun, you notice they turn quite bright. But the white parts of the whales that are in the shadow, they'll turn the color of the surroundings of the whale, which is usually a bluish or purple color. This is a painting of a whale that's underwater. So I put a lot of wet paint down here. I started by putting down some dark grays and light grays, and I kept the paint nice and wet. I even put some colors like some browns and yellows, greens and blues, and just kind of wiggled my brush around to give it that really wet effect. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw and paint your Hawaiian humpback whales here at the Maui Ocean Center.